From the world headquarters of Fox News, it's The Kelly File with Megyn Kelly. And back to our focus group in a minute. But first, the president is already in trouble with the fact checkers tonight for doubling down on earlier misstatements about his health care law, specifically the number of people enrolled in it thanks to Obamacare. Listen. Already because of the Affordable Care Act, more than 3 million Americans under age 26 have gained coverage under their parents' plan. More than 9 million Americans have signed up for private health insurance or Medicaid coverage. Uh, Chris Dyerwalt is our Fox News digital politics editor and host of Power Play on foxnews.com live. We've been through this, Chris. Yeah, that's just not true. That's simply not true. Uh, and the president knows it or ought to know it anyway. Certainly the claim that somehow the millions of people that the administration takes credit for signing up for Medicaid, the welfare program of insurance for lower income families, uh, is bogus because here's why. People sign up for Medicaid all the time. They do it month after month, whether there's Obamacare or not Obamacare. The administration, in this case, the person of the president, in his State of the Union address, is taking credit for everybody who signed up for Medicaid after the implementation of Obamacare. And that's just not right. Right. And, and attributing it to the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, when there is no proof of the linkage. Now, the Washington Post and its fact checker, Glenn Kessler, came out with a piece two weeks ago, then that you and I talked about. Look at it. This is their conclusion. Warning. Ignore claims that 3.9 million, and that number was included in the president's number tonight, uh, signed up to Medicaid because of Obamacare, and they gave the president three Pinocchios on this and specifically warned people not to use that number. It is the very number that was submersed in the 9 million number the president put out there tonight. I mean, they, they just continue to misstate the facts on these numbers, Chris. To mislead people on this is pretty remarkable, given the fact that everything else that he talked about in what is the most important thing that he has done as president, the most significant thing of his presidency, was buried 40 minutes into the speech, basically talked about non-controversial, already existing things, and then throws in, not mentioning the millions of people who got canceled, obviously, not mentioning the disruptions ahead, but instead just talking about, oh, nine million people have signed up, when that is a bogus number. Yeah. This does not say good things about the state of that law. And earlier it talked about rebuilding trust. In any event, Chris, good to see you. You bet. Our focus group is back with reaction to the State of the Union address, and here with us again, pollster Frank Luntz. Frank? Megan, and one more time, I'm going to show you the clip that stood out more than any of these. When Barack Obama issued a challenge to Congress, we had Republicans going in one direction, Democrats going in another. Let's take a look. America does not stand still, and neither will I. So wherever and whenever I can take steps without legislation to expand opportunity for more American families, that's what I'm going to do. We don't normally have divisions like that. Everyone here who's a Republican hated it. Most people who are Democrats liked it. Where did you stand? I was in support for President Barack Obama. Um, it was a very extreme statement, but I feel that if he doesn't approach this with aggression, we may never see change. But that means ignoring Congress. C correct. You're prepared to go that far? Well, I think this is a gamble on his part. He's counting on America's historically low opinion of Congress. He thinks he can do an end around, but I'm just not comfortable with him resting his political agenda on a gamble. Does this mean that the public, and Robin, I'll ask you, does this mean that the public really, it doesn't matter that you put someone in office in Congress, that the president should have that much power? No, just the opposite. I think it's a very alarming thing to hear in a constitutional democracy for a president to say that he is going to uh, circumvent or go around laws of Congress, which is what he's been accused of lately um, by directing federal agencies to enforce laws he likes and to ignore laws he doesn't like. You're the mom of two. Is this what you teach your kids? I think, I think this is a real slippery slope. Um, there has been so much infighting in Congress, and it's very hard to explain to my children why they won't cooperate when they're told and taught how to work with each other. So for Obama to go ahead and, again, take that risk, he's got to be transparent, but he's got a good reason. So it, it's got to be something that's cooperative. Okay, show of hands is a way to get out. How many of you support the president that he's prepared to take unilateral action? Raise your hands if you support it. And who opposes it? 
I hope the president listening is listening. Megan, this is a big deal. This is significant. And when you try to take that much power and say the Congress doesn't matter, the American people aren't going to support you. Fascinating stuff. Frank, thank you. Panel, thank you as well.